to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. On the show today, I have Christina Samatis and Renee DeSanto, the founders of Park and Oak Interior Design, which is located in Glen Ellen, Illinois. This company works on new construction, renovation, and projects all across the U.S. You may know these ladies if you're one of their over 130,000 followers on Instagram, or maybe you've seen them on a panel at Merchandise Mart in Chicago or in High Point. And if you have, I imagine maybe you've made some assumptions about these ladies and their company. I'll go first because I have met them at both of these design venues and I made some of my own assumptions. First, First, I assumed they were in business for many more years than they are. They only started their firm in 2015, and by the looks of their portfolio and their Instagram, it speaks to a much more experienced firm than that. Next, the way they handle themselves and speak about their firm also conveys more experience, and it conveys a sense of things go right for us. So today, Renee and Christina pull back the curtain and share the bold truths about the lessons and experiences in their first three years in business. And yes, things might go right for them, but you will learn today it is because they work hard and they were willing to persevere, even when it seemed like there was little light at the end of the tunnel. And also it's because they have each other. Before we meet Renee and Christina, a big shout out to our show sponsor, Article.com. Com, your resource for mid-century Scandinavian inspired furniture for living rooms, dining rooms, office is an outdoor spaces. More than the furniture, though, is the team at Article. If you are one of the nearly 200 designers that attended Luann Nigara Live, It's About the Conversation, then you know Article provided the beautiful chairs for the stage. But maybe you also met Tannis. Tannis flew in for the event, and just like her colleagues that, have, that I have had the good fortune to work with, Chad, Jillian, and Duncan, Tannis is dedicated to helping you find just the right product for your next project. Open your trade account today at welldesign.article.com. If you want more to learn more about article.com, please take a listen to episodes number 301 and 367. And I'm sure you'll see in article.com just what I see. Now let's meet Renee and Christina. Hi, Christina. Hi, Renee. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hi, this is Christina. Thanks so much for having us. Hi, this is Renee. Thank you. So, ladies, I am happy to have you here today because uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting you you guys in person two times. Once in Chicago last September 2018 and once in High Point in October, just a couple of weeks after that at the Gabby showroom, right? The first we were at, yep. uh, right? We were, where in Chicago were we? I know I was there for LaFroy Le- Brooks and Kravit, but, oh, I think I the met Shade you. Store. Yes, right? Because Alexa Hampton was there. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Yes. And you were doing the Instagram for the shade store that day. Is that what was going on? That's correct. We did the takeover for them. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my God. How funny is Alexa Hampton? She is a hoot. Oh. I didn't realize she had such a personality. Me either. I was so, I was so blown away. She was so fun. And her, her team and mine have tried, I can't tell you how many times to get it together. One day we'll get her on the show. And then my, my uh, desire went up, you know, tenfold after meeting her in person that day, right? 
Well, she would be a great guest. Yeah. She'd be very entertaining and give lots of great information. Exactly. So, that... so um, but then I started looking into you guys because I met you there and I was like, huh, these girls got something going on. And then I was like, oh, sweet Jesus, they have a lot going on. <laughs> so I'm so impressed with your, your body of work. I'm very impressed um, with the way you run your firm because I've been getting to know you. And of course, we can't leave, you know, the elephant in the room is this 131,000 followers on Instagram. And so we're going to take this apart a little bit because um, the, the sort of success that you guys are enjoying, especially in just three years, is not typical. I have you know, myself been in business almost four decades and know what it takes to build a, a business and a brand. And I have not even sniffed at what you guys have done in under three years. And like I said, I've been at it a heck of a lot longer. <laughs> um, and also, I have also with the podcast, obviously had the opportunity to speak to so many different designers. And this combination that you guys have is that magic, magic, magic combination of really running a nice firm, growing it very quickly. I know from talking to you that you're profitable and making money for your homes and your income. And this also amazing splash on social media. So this doesn't happen just by, you know, putting cute things out there. Let's talk about it a little bit. Take us to the beginning on what was, what did each of you bring to the table that attracted you as partners? So I think that's probably a good place to start. Sure. This is Christina. Um, I had, been working in, in the, the field of design for several years after I had my second son and um, was trying to, you know, just get my feet into the, into the arena. I was, I went to design school for a short bit in the city. Um, I didn't graduate, but I, I knew it was something that I was really passionate about and wanted to do. And I had the opportunity to work with um, a local designer and learned a lot and learned a ton there. Um, but then, you know, I had three young kids under the age of five. It was super stressful to like try to make the 45 minute minute commute and then also like be learning all at the same time and raising them. So it just became too much. I had a newborn and I left what I thought was my dream job to like, you know, do some stuff um, maybe on my own if I could, if there were some projects here locally. Um, but then I started working with a builder um, that had worked on my home and helping him with spec homes and um, then working with some of their clients. And then those clients rolled into um, interior design projects um, outside of the construction side. So that's like the really short snippet of like mm. how I went into this, got into the design world and um, what I was doing there. Meanwhile, Renee um, has all these other talents that I'll let her share about and how our paths crossed. Hi, this is Renee. Um, so my background is sort of random. I was uh, I had a cake business for a while. I also um, had a graphic design business. I was into photography. And then um, after having kids, I was not able to maintain um, working on this cake business and working with brides on the weekends. So I ended up um, starting a blog and learning more about social media and taking pictures and getting more into photography. And then that's when Christina and I met and she was working on her projects and I had asked her to do a couple of blog posts on um, the blog I was working on. And we realized in doing that, how well we worked together. We were, I took some pictures of her projects and we found out that, you know, we, we partnered really well on those couple of posts. So after that, um, we started talking just about, Hey, you're working on these projects. I like photography. Why don't we combine what we're both working on and see what happens? Um, we, so sorry, we started on an Instagram account, started posting a few pictures. Uh, and then it really, from there, it was, it was something that was unexpected. So at this point, and and so you start the Instagram account, but you're not in business together, really. You're not a, you're not officially in business together, and you haven't decided what that business is. And it's go, you know, it's a design firm. You're just like, 
I'm really great at photography. I'm really great at writing. I'm really great at putting blog posts together. And you've got a body of work that's really beautiful that we can feature. And we also have great chemistry. Am I reading that part right so far? Correct, yes. Whoa. Okay. So so now we, you, you guys, so essentially, you know, Christina is in her world, raising her kids, doing her design projects. You're in your world, raising your kids, doing the blog, and you're occasionally coming together to do these things together, whether I mean by occasionally you're meeting once or twice a week, but you're posting every day, whatever that means. But how long do you both do this level together before one of you says, let's make this more formal or let's turn this into an official business? What, what does that look like? This is Christina. Um, so it it happened to be that, I mean, Renee and I live around the corner from each other at the time. She lived on Oak and I live on Park and there was a <laughs> park in between us. I know there was a park in between us. And so we started meeting up almost daily um, after like the first project, like working together on the blog worked well and just would sit down at a picnic table while the kids are playing and start um, brainstorming about like how and what this could look like and what this could be. And it wasn't, um, it wasn't that we just started an Instagram account and, and just started posting photos and didn't have like some sort of goal in mind. I mean, we are, um, Renee and I are definitely dreamers. We have like goals that we set out there for ourselves. So we, we put that with the intention of, creating a business for ourselves Mm. but you know being that we were moms we had small children we hadn't um been in this field very much we weren't sure like how long it was going to take or if it was even possible for us to break into this field so it was something that we were testing in that respect but we were daily meeting um talking about like what could this be what would this look like what would our roles be um what would be the goal in five years what would be the goal in one year you know and for us it was um, something that we just started almost obsessing about, you know, talking mm-hmm. constantly and trying to figure out what it could be. And what were, do you, do you guys remember what some of those one year and five year goals were? It's funny. Cause, um, I write down a lot of notes in my computer and I was just looking back at some of them and like back in 2017, I was looking at, Oh, it'd be nice. You know, we put in there that, you know, one of our goals would be that, you know, maybe we could have a team, maybe we could have a studio. It'd be great if we could have some projects that with, with, um, dream job projects, so to speak. And then maybe in a year we could just, you know, at that time it was just a small goal of maybe we just have a studio space, like outside of the home that we could work in. Um, and so we put those out there and, um, work towards those goals. And it really, quickly became where we had our first studio. We had someone helping us that was working with us. Um, then we had another person working with us, helping us. And then we had another person and then we were outgrew this like one room studio and needed to go into another studio. And, um, so it was pretty, it took us by surprise in that respect. Okay. And we should probably clarify what your roles are in the business. Cause I have questions about how you go from the park bench to the studio, but Being that you described that, Renee, you're not an interior designer. So how do you, you right away from the beginning are setting this up with goals. I hear that now. So it wasn't like, oh, a year later, hey, we're onto something. What would this look like? It's like, no, we sit down and we wanted this to be a design studio, it sounds like. So what are your individual roles? What what does that have? How's that work? So now the way that... um... The way that we approach it is we work collaboratively and we've learned so much in the past three years about the industry. We we work on design boards together. Okay. Um, we try to do as much of the design work as we can. And then we have a team that helps us with, um, you know, talking to new submissions, um, a purchasing agent, project managers. But we like to stay as involved in the design process as possible. So um, what makes, what is so special about our relationship is when we go back and forth, we bring very different perspectives to the table. So we will sit down and have a meeting and Christina is, she's more functional. um, And sometimes, you know, we go back and forth about, okay, what about this idea? And she'll say like, well, how's that going to function for the family? And how does that, how does that feel for the way that they live? And, you know, we, 
we work well together in that respect. Mm-hmm. So even though, Renee, you're, as you mentioned, you're, you're, your background isn't in interior design, but you're a creative, you're a designer, a designer of cakes, a designer of photo- photography. I mean, you have this eye. So this is where you come together, and it sounds like you were both smart enough from the beginning to look outside your skill sets, and that's the team members that you hired as you grew, people that had things that either you didn't want to do or things that you knew others could do better than the two of you, and you keep the design as as close to the vest for the two of you absolutely yeah okay. yes and to be fair like Renee I always describe her as just like a, an overall creative like you said right. like she just she can paint she does photography and I feel like her what she brings to the table when she looks at a space is she looks at the room almost like upside down mm-hmm. like how can we like in a way that is so different than anyone else looks at it and so when it comes together the functional the more traditional with the upside down it all creates like what you see for park and oak and although maybe she is in charge now currently and always has been of like the social media aspect and i you you could say like head up the design we work on both together we work we work um yeah so it's we haven't separated those out to Mm -hmm. the fact that neither one of us have like a touch on it. We have a touch on it, but somebody's leading it, obviously. Right, right, right. Interesting. I think it's it's very cool. So, so now you go from the park bench to getting a studio. Okay. And at this point, are you doing projects together and you've got paid projects and you're reinvesting the earnings from these projects into the studio? Or are you bringing your own money to the table and saying, look, we're going to build a business here and we're going to, you know, take a loan against our houses or we've got to use some savings and we're going to invest. How, how does this happen? Yeah. So the way it worked is that, you know, we go from the park bench to my dining room table and then our studio to begin with was like 500 square feet. It was really important to us that it was like close to our home so Mm -hmm. that you know, because we have small families, like we could technically walk there. So we are in town where we live, but it allowed us to have this space. And we did have some clients already because um, I had some design clients. So we, we built on those clients Mm -hmm. and um, we didn't take a salary. We didn't take a salary for the first two and a half, two years. You know, Mm -hmm. we didn't take any of the money, but what we, and we also didn't take a loan. So we were it was really important for Renee and I to do this on our own, to not look to um, outside family members to help us with this. So we put everything right back into the company. Mm-hmm. And when we had enough money to rent a space, then we rented a space. And it wasn't a big space. So the rent wasn't crazy. But, mm-hmm. you know, and then we used um, that money to purchase computers and things like that. And then when we the first person that we hired that was the most important person was um like a bookkeeper because Mm -hmm. that is neither one of our strengths so you know that to your point like to hire where we're weak like that is you know that's the best investment you can make is to hire an accounting firm and a bookkeeper because that's so important the sales tax you have to pay Mm -hmm. all of that jazz right and how did you had it sounds like you knew enough to know what you didn't know So, and what I mean by that is it sounds like from the beginning, like for instance, there had to be people that would look at you and say, wait a second, you're in your second year and you still haven't made money. Wait a second, you're in your second year and you know, you're going to hire a bookkeeper and you haven't had a salary yet. So there is, I, I remember when my husband, you know, when we started window works, he didn't take a salary for a year and a half. I did because it was my only job, but he had two other businesses and a full-time job, right? So the thing is, there are things that you do when you open and start a business. But I think that sometimes our colleagues believe that if they are six, eight, 10 months working and haven't made money, that somehow they're doing it all wrong. And there is something wrong in that if you're not making money because you're, you're not intentionally sitting down and analyzing and doing whatever. But it had to be with little kids, with husbands that are not involved in the business, there had to be times and conversations where whoever came at you and said, Really, ladies? Like, what is this a play? What are you doing? What? How did? How did you handle that? And how did you know to keep powering through? 
Yeah, this is Christina. Uh, it was really stressful for me in my marriage, actually, in the very beginning, because, you know, to to spend this time away that you have to to invest in a company that time alone and not to have a paycheck. Um, you know, my husband, I remember him saying to me, I really hope this uh, sacrifice is worth it in the end for you. Mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't that he was trying to not be supportive, but at the same time, when you're not bringing home a paycheck, you're paying a babysitter mm -hmm. um, and you're away from your family, you know, it puts a strain on there. But it was something that we believed so believed in so much that we believed it could be something and that it could be bigger than us if we just prevailed. So it was it or persevered, I should say, I'm sorry, but it was so it was not it was challenging for sure. Mm -hmm. And how about you, Renee? What did you experience? I had the same situation, which, you know, it was for, it was so nice to have someone else too to talk to about it. So Chris and I would sit down and say, you know, our husbands are both kind of reacting the same way. Um, we're not bringing home a paycheck right now. We're putting so much work into this and we're working at night, staying up late, working on the weekends, um, constantly thinking about it. And it, it consumes you in the beginning. And, um, Actually, not just in the beginning. I feel like it just it <laughs> continues. <laughs> I don't still. know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, you're still in still. the beginning, right? Three years. <laughs> right. Um, it's so still consuming. Us. We're still consumed right now. Um, but but we both believed in it, and there was a lot of justifying, and mm -hmm. there was a lot of you know, look at this business and look at that business, and they didn't make money for five years, and you have to reinvest, and you have to invest in employees, and you have to put money in up front as and take risks mm -hmm. if in the future you want it to be profitable mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we had so many of those conversations and a lot of a lot of people that were skeptical so um but we just kept we kept going and we're like we know we have something here let's keep trying this and it was nice to also have each other though to keep pushing each other forward because if chris was going through something you know we would talk about it and i'm like so that happened to me last week. What this is, do you have any ideas? How do we respond to this? Like, mm -hmm. let's keep going. Right. So um, now it's a little bit different. There's a lot right. more support, I have to say. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's some dollar bills coming in. <laughs> let's be serious. Oh, it did work. <laughs> a lot of support now. So. Yes, yeah, no, that's good. good. I mean, and the thing is, and that addresses the fears and the anxieties that each of your husbands had, because I think that's what it is. If you are, and it sounds like, you both have good marriages and good support, but it, it is just simply a fear. It's not only a fear of we're supporting this business, but it's a fear of your emotional, um, he, like your husband I hope it's worth it for you. It's not a threat. It was, I really hope it's worth it for you because you're giving it all. So we understand that the, the husbands have this little um, anxiety, but then you guys have little kids. So, you know, you had to also not only have your husband looking at you and with that adult analyzation of are you sure about this but then you have little kids that are just like mom where, where are you going why are you leaving again or or if you're not experiencing that then it's to what you said you're putting the bed at seven o'clock and starting your work night and getting up before them tell us a little bit about because that had to be just flat out exhausting yeah for me um I struggled with that the most, I would say. I um, I really, I would get up at night and have like panic attacks that I didn't spend enough time. And though, you know, I did, like I really tried to carve out time for the children and make that a priority. Um, you know, it would, it would give me anxiety, mm. especially because my daughter was younger. But at the same time, I grew up with a mom that had a full-time job that was a really big job. And I saw what she put into it. And um, and appreciated what she did. And I think that, um, it gave me the courage to do this and to be, to try something and to know that I think it's also important really for women to think that they could be more than just a mom. Mm -hmm. Like, and that was part of our foundation and part of our mission statement was to be, um, yes, we, we are moms and family is first and that's our priority. However, it's okay to be more than that. And we want it to be like, we weren't okay with just um, doing just that. We want it to be the creative side as well. So I think it teaches our children and that's what 
made us feel better, or at least made me feel better knowing that I was teaching my children that they could be more than one thing, that they could chase their dreams, chase their goals, and also keep their family a priority. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, the truth is nobody says to uh, the fathers when they work hard and support their families and bring in the bacon, like, are you sure you're being a good dad? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, you don't question it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if you question somebody being a good dad, you question it because you see an example of them not behaving well. You just don't assume you have a job, so therefore you might not be a good dad, right? So we do that to women. We, we sort of say, are you actually able to be a good mom and own this business, right? Yeah, there's so much pressure there for women to yeah. do it all. And then also to volunteer at school and all mm -hmm. of that. You know, mm -hmm. there's so much. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think honestly, for, for me, I would have, and, I, and I, Renee and I talk about this all the time, this probably would have stopped dead in the tracks year one for me had I been doing this on my own because the pressure mm. from everything, everyone outside saying, you know, oh, your kids or my husband or the children, like it just, it would have been too much. But the fact that we had each other to lean on mm. that, you know, when my low was hitting, she was on a high or vice versa. Like it was really comforting and helpful. Mm -hmm. And also too, you know, cause you're not only dealing with all of the emotional things you you probably are walking around on sleep deprivation at this point i gotta believe absolutely uh, yeah <laughs> late night <laughs> late night early morning yes all of the above yes I, I i know it i know it i have you know it, it's it's i cannot fathom building what you ladies have built at all let alone under the circumstances of adding a, a, a young family to it. And, you know, that just is beyond my comprehension. And it speaks to, you know, your discipline. It speaks to your intelligence. It speaks to your dedication. And it speaks to your, your, your work ethic and your drive. And I'm in awe of the two of you, quite frankly. And so, so hats off. Um, so Thank moving, you. you're welcome. So moving ahead in here, though, where do we hit the moment where you feel like, okay, momentum, this is working. We've got something here. I'm about to turn a corner and it's all starting to feel like, yes, I know it's worth it. And my family, my husband, my friends, my parents are saying, okay, I, I can see what you've been doing, you crazy two ladies, you know, 16 hours a day. What, when does that happen? I think that was probably it, maybe around year two when I, you, we almost reached a point where we were just so exhausted and we were reinvesting everything. And it's like, are we going to make money? And then all of a sudden we were getting the clients that we had dreamed of and people were approaching us. We were getting to work on these projects where it was what we in the beginning had discussed mm -hmm. and um, reaching these goals. And then, we just we started making money and it was like okay this is this is all coming together and another big turning point was when we realized well we really have an amazing team that we put together mm. and we couldn't do it without our team and it takes time to get there too to find the right people for the right job and we it feels very much like a family here now mm. where we all it's amazing what our team does for us so yeah. I think when we reached that point and everyone was working really well together, they understood their roles. Um, we, it was just, it, everything started clicking. And that was right in the beginning of probably like right after year two, year three. Which also I would say affords us, afforded us the opportunity to take on more projects because people had their roles. So as soon as the design process got done, we could hand it off to somebody else to to manage with the proposal writing or the ordering or the following up on that stuff. Cause you know, all of that takes so much time, especially if something comes in damaged or something's delayed. And so to, when we were able to have that person to do that, it allowed us the opportunity to focus on really what we're passionate about, which is the design side. So here's what I have to say. I just have to cut in and say, hello, what did we just hear right here? We heard that you have a finite system.
and that because you had a finite system from once the design was was contracted, boom, it could be turned over and executed. Of course, you're in the building and of course you're overseeing and you're wondering, you know, you're, you're following what invoices are happening and what monies are being collected and what products are being ordered. But you have a system in place so that your team can exit. You don't have to be with doing everything and say, no, I do it this way. Oh, we do it that way. Or did you remember this? Right? Am I, am I, I'm hearing my, this, this conversation correct? right that's absolutely, absolutely what happened yeah. it took it took the first couple of years to build those systems mm -hmm. and constantly thinking about how can we make this more efficient how can we set this up so we prevent problems and it's almost a no fail system where we know what's going to happen what's expected our team knows what's expected and everything starts flowing and that it takes time to think about that to revise it we made mistakes in the beginning and we learn from those mistakes. And we still make mistakes, but we sure. still do. Yeah, sure. they were they were probably bigger in the beginning. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, it's interesting because I have a, a a thing here written in front of me that I'm waiting for the moment to ask it. So I may as well now. Can you think about something that was a failure, a like, oh my goodness, like a stomach punch failure that you had to pick yourself up and just look in the mirror and say that really sucked. And you were both on the ground because of this, but we're going to get up again. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can see that happen for sure. And that happened. Um, I, I, it happened in year one for us. And honestly, it, it took us by surprise. But I think it was the greatest opportunity handed to us by the universe because it allowed us to sharpen our pencils in so many different areas and um, learn so much from it. We had a client that you know, our systems for accounting and invoicing were so new. It was so fresh. We, we didn't have it down to a, to a science. We didn't understand it as well as we do now. And we had mistakes on our invoicing that, um, really just cost us, you know, the trust in this, from this client. And, um, she was super angry about it and it wasn't like a massive, uh, amount of money. I think it was just um, her perception of what she was getting versus like what was actually on the invoice. And um, she, she got very angry about it, did a mm. blog about it, created a blog about Whoa. it, started, started going it was, on. It was bad. <laughs> sales sites, local sites, talking about why you shouldn't be using Park and Oak. I mean, talk about a gut punch. Like oh we were... That was a social media attack on all of our platforms, Instagram, platform. Pinterest, Facebook. She was contacting um, all of our contacts on Facebook, my mom. <laughs> so, yeah, everyone sending a, a letter just saying, you know, the, re the, you know, why you shouldn't use Park and Oak. And I couldn't. I had to be the one to talk to her and to understand and to try to figure out, like, how we can make this better, how this small thing became so massive and huge. And um, we had several different conversations, but there was one call in particular that we had that I was trying to really just wrong the right or right the wrong. Right the wrong. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a little Freudian slip there. <laughs> you know what? This is how I really feel about it. <laughs> Let's just make it really wrong. <laughs> oh my God. It, but yeah, probably. But right, like maybe 10 minutes before I'm supposed to have this phone call with her. And I'm nervous at the time. I, I already hate confrontation. Don't like it in the beginning, but you know, it's something in business you have to have, like you have to be able to have tough conversations mm -hmm. and, and have those. Um, I get a call from one of our favorite um, showrooms at the Merchandise Mart and he, they had been made aware of this um, social media um, <gasps> like craziness. And they called just to say that they supported us, that they were behind us, Whoa. that they, they knew that, like we weren't doing anything out of like, we weren't doing anything that was truly uh, like we had a slight markup at the time on the furniture and it wasn't even what is the industry standard or anything like that. And just said, whatever you need, we're here for you. And that little call from that um, person really 
gave me the courage to believe that like, I mean, you know, it stops you in your tracks. You're like, are we doing this? Should we be doing this? Is this even worth it? Like, this is crazy. And that call gave me the courage to really just stand up for us and, and know that we were doing the right thing and, and understand that this was a fluke and a one-off that like, hopefully we would never experience again, but it really tested us in a way that. That's amazing. Yeah. So then we had attorneys re-review the, um, the, our, um, propose our, uh, proposals, our contracts, we set up new systems. So that really, I think was the launching pad for us to create all of these systems and to make sure that like when someone calls in, we even have a PowerPoint. So they all, we are, we know that even though we're not taking that initial call, somebody, everybody's receiving the same information. So they have that PowerPoint. They go through it on the phone. Everyone's received the same information. They get the proposal, they get the contract. It's all the same. It's all buttoned up. It all specifies everything that needs to be on there. And that's super important to protect yourself in that way as well. Oh my, I am absolutely stunned. That is amazing. And I, I can't even fathom the depth of that stomach punch. That had to be like, you probably wanted to, how many how, did, was it went on for a week, for a month, for six weeks? Like how long Oops. were you mug, mucked and mired in this social media blast? It was, it was probably, it was, yeah, it was a couple months and it would go on and off. And it was like, we had to, I felt like every morning I would wake up and look at my phone Mm -hmm. and check, you know, Instagram and Pinterest and see these notifications and Facebook. And I, we would wait for it because it would happen at like seven o'clock every night. And then it just kept going on. And it was like, what are we going to do like this? And it became, it was so out of control. And in that first year when, you know, you don't like, are, are we doing something wrong? Did we, you don't really truly understand the industry. And looking back, we didn't really do anything wrong, but we did learn that we need to manage people's expectations Mm -hmm. and give them all of the information up front. So there's no room for them to think something, um, you know, to believe something different from what is going to happen. Wow. So that's what we learned from that. And that's helped us. But it was really difficult. And almost in the beginning, you're like, what are we doing? Why are we being, why are we subjecting ourselves? to? I can't even fathom actually experiencing that level of attack. And then still also you're in the stage where you're not making money yet. And your husbands and your families must have been looking at you like you're really out of your mind now, ladies. Right. Well, Yeah. And it was affecting me emotionally so much at home. You know, I was so sick to my stomach, so upset about it. And I, I don't cry and I'm crying all the time. I'm not eating. And my husband's like, this is outrageous. This is ridiculous. ridiculous. Why is this affecting you like this? And I'm like, because we've worked so hard up to this point and we have such great plans and this is going to blow up in our face. Like, oh my God, goosebumps. I honestly have goosebumps. I can't even imagine it. You know, what was really cool, too, is that it started to backfire on this person. Uh, It started to have like social media started to work um, for us instead of against us. People started standing up Mm. against saying, how could you stop, you know, trying to bring them down? Like they are two women trying to do something to build a company. And you're worried about, you know, X like this is craziness. Like you have first world problems like this is not a real problem and so it was was cool to see that support it was people that we didn't even know yeah I mean that level of vindictiveness is just insane it's bordering on psychopathic I mean it's like you know it's associate it's insanity to me that you could spend that much energy on any business transaction that you've been disappointed in or you feel like you've been wronged in or you've been ripped off in whatever you what that person classified it as is it really worth that kind of energy that's insanity to me yeah, we couldn't understand it either. It was really something remarkable, I must say. Um, wow. Out of body for sure. But like the good positive that mm-hmm. came out of it mm-hmm. is that it did force us to sharpen our pencils, mm-hmm. like to really set forth and really focus on what will be the process for things. How will we inform our clients? How will we, 
you know, make sure that this never happens again oh in any goodness. capacity. Well, it's the truth. I love that you learned the lesson from it because, you know, I have a thing with my kids and, you know, any of my girlfriends that I've ever spoken to and stuff, and they'll be like, I can't believe this is happening to me again. And I'll be like, well, that's because you're not listening to the universe's lesson in it. And the universe will keep putting that lesson in your face until you say, uncle, okay, I have to revise something. I have to change my thinking. I have to change my mindset. I have to get up in the morning and do something different. And because this is an important lesson that you're meant to learn and it just will keep coming to you until you learn it. And so for you guys to, in the midst of this really painful situation, to rise up out of it and say, okay, big girl panties, what are we going to do? How are we going to make sure this never happens again? As opposed to just being like, poor us, we didn't deserve that. You know, you, I, I, I always say there is a place in any situation that goes wrong that you can find the moment, the question, the statement, the service, the anything, the phone call, something that you could have done to change that outcome. It doesn't need to be a big thing, right? It's And, and it doesn't mean that the other person isn't out of line. So this client, it was clearly out of line. But to your point, you're like, you know what? If we change this system, if we institute that, if we get this contract written, then this can't happen to us again. See, there is some power in that. You have some control over that situation, but only because you're willing to look in the mirror instead of saying, poor us, this happened to us. You took ownership and said, how can we make sure that we're not in this situation again and that we don't put ourselves like this with a client again? Oh my God. And that showroom to go out of the way to call you up. That's awesome. Amazing. And they forever have our support too. That's because right. That call, you know, it's something that they didn't even know us at the time. We weren't even a big buyer at the wow. time from them. And they and it just they just felt that they should reach out and they happened to reach out. The universe sent them to us at the time wow. right before we were supposed to have this big call and it happened and it was just wow. It it was just crazy. And so I fully believe what you just said. It was something for sure. Yes. And it sends you the messages that you need to when you need them, like that phone call. My goodness. I mean, because I have to say, you know, look, you're, you know, your cousin twice removed that you used to go to the swimming pool every day with in the summer who you love, 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 but you never speak to could have saw it on Facebook and called you. And that would have made you feel good but not the same as a showroom, as a stranger XYZ saying objectively, I'm standing in this industry with you and I need you to know that I know you're good business people and plow through this. That's incredible. That's an amazing message. Oh. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, I, you certainly surprised me with that one. I have to say, <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, well, you know, one time we did a floor plan wrong and you know, the, the sofa didn't fit in the elevator. You know what oh, I mean? We've had those problems too, but those yeah. are small little problems compared to <laughs> See, I have to say, ladies, I, you know, I, 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 it's funny because I will share with you a vulnerable moment now with this and because it, re, it relates to both points that I want to make. The simple fact is, is that um, when I interviewed Shay McGee the first time, it is literally the only negative review that I have in iTunes or YouTube anywhere. Okay. And what happened was it's, it, it, the, the at least... I don't know, three people wrote about it. And what I know to be true is if three people wrote about it, 50 people thought it. That's what I know, whether it's good or bad, right? right? Whether it's good or bad. Sure. But the review came out and the reviews were, you know, I can't believe the host actually talked like she was comparing herself to Shay McGee. And the other statement was, you know, the host talked so much in the beginning and that was annoying. And then finally she let Shay talk. And the thing was, it was funny because I was shocked. I, that's why I said I can't even imagine months of this, <laughs> like really going at you. Because just those sentences, I was like, whoa. And I said to Kim, who was my right-hand man, I said to her, what the heck? What happened? And I listened to the interview again. And I'm like, what? And so she says to me, I listened to it. I didn't think anything wrong. And so she comes in the next day and she says to me, I listened to it again. She said, and I have to say to you, Lou, she said, the first time I listened to it with two filters. Number one, I know you and you have mentored me for 10 years. Number two, 
I know you and I know that your show is that you share your experience off of and and with in conjunction with the guest and she said and probably Shay is such a big platform that her name attracted listeners to your show that have never heard your show so they don't come expecting to hear a conversation they come maybe expecting more like an interview ask one question let them talk ask one question let them talk right so it's two little observations that she had that I thought were really good but the thing about right and but the thing about the the con- the person and the several people that were like I can't believe she was like pairing- comparing herself to Shay McGee, and the thing about it was was I was asking Shay about building her her business, and she told me it was I knew I wanted to build an empire, and she told me how her husband and her sacrificed, and she told me how they sold their house and went and then put everything in hock and you know put everything on the line and hired employees and did projects and worked. 18 hour days and didn't take a salary for a long time. And she was going, you know, explaining this to us and I was visualizing it and I was remembering it. And I also did have an experience of building window works from the ground up with my husband and now building this podcast up from the ground up. And I know the hours that it takes. And I know in our marriage, the things that we had to do in order so that when the success came, that we were together still because you can get so zoned in and so zeroed in on what you're doing because it's consuming and obsessing like you said, you get obsessed over it. Like you girls said. And then when the turn turns, it's a different kind of obsession because now it's full pedal to the, you know, metal to the gas, you know, it's moving. So now you've got to keep it pushing. You've got to keep going. And the thing is, I know I had the great lesson of my husband. He never lets us go. I would have been the girl that would have been like, yeah, okay, I'm building this empire, whether it was window works or podcast, and I'll see you when it's built and we'll be good, right? I, I know, yeah. I know I would have been that girl because I would not have known how fragile a marriage could be. But he had been married once and he knew how fragile a marriage could be. And he consistently and expected and demanded that we spend time alone without our kids and without our friends. And I remember it feeling like an imposition in the beginning sometimes. Yeah. It was. I, the same thing. Right? I, I, see, I totally understand that. He did the same thing. Right. That see, that's a thing. gift. That's right. a gift. Your it's husband great. gave you a huge gift with that. And so I just said to Shay, what are you doing in that regard? And she explained their patterns with it. And she, 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 she and Sid seem to have the exact same built-in thing that's, you know, making a safeguard against losing the, them in it. But I took 10 minutes like I'm taking now to share that shared experience, to give weight to it. And so what's interesting, my double lesson is in this, and the reason for sharing this is, number one, I know what it's feel like on a tenth of a scale to have criticism of you. And And number two, I know what you're going through in building this and to feel like, wait, this could fall apart. Like what, wait, what happened? Right? Like, no, 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 no. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Right. So it's, it's a crazy phenomenon. And I want to say to you too, that all the people that I interview on the show, over 400 interviews in three years, all levels of success all levels from the designer that's working very hard. I, I, I recall Natalie Hurst. She has made a decision that she wants to work, whatever it is, three days a week, X amount of hours per day, while she raises her children. She has fashioned her business. This is her model, right? She does not want it to be bigger than the manageable level of her being able to be the full-time mom. So whether you are a designer listening and that's your goal, or you are a designer listening that wants to be a Park and Oak, that wants to be a Shea McGee, an Amber Lewis, wants to have this type of thing, there are always things that are happening, choices, decisions, failures, challenges, victories that you're not seeing on Instagram, that you're not seeing in the blog post, right, ladies? I mean, there's so much happening. It's like you strike me as the epitome of that analogy of the the duck gliding on the water, but the feet are moving a mile a minute underneath. You guys look 
amazing and you your work is beautiful and your platform is amazing and you're charming and you speak well and you do panels but it is it there's a lot that goes on when we're not looking isn't there oh my gosh there's so much and honestly if it weren't for like to your point my husband and his support and helping and he really had to you know do so much at home and stuff this couldn't happen you know this right. couldn't work like this right. and um renee has an awesome support system at home with she has a, a person that she was able to hire and help with that so all of these things get in place help us to do our job better mm -hmm. and do you know do it but there's so much behind the scenes that we don't we used to always joke that we'd start another instagram uh, account called the real park and oak because you know <laughs> it's you know, I don't want to ever give anyone the misconception that it's perfect because obviously it's not like there's a lot of BS that goes on yeah. and um, lots of, you know, things that happen. But um, what we post and what we put on Instagram is the most perfect moment. <laughs> moment. moment. It's so. so true. So when you I, I just a couple more things to help uh, your colleagues uh, when you now you decide okay we got to lock this down right that's a bit, that's a big commitment too to really examine systems to really get clear on okay how do we answer the phone oh and you know what and how do we do intake and you know what we do it so precisely this way that we're going to make a powerpoint for it we're not taking anything to chance if i am at a client meeting or i am picking up my kid then you're going to answer the phone and you're going to get this information and here's how i know so that's that's a stepping back from working in the business to work on the business. And I find that a lot of designers struggle with putting that time aside. I, a lot of us, I shouldn't say designers, all business people do. We all struggle with that. And at each level of growth, you almost have to, I, you tell me, I find that at each level of growth, I have to step back and repeat that process again. And I also have experienced the growth level where I'm so busy that I'm not taking the step back and then finally something breaks up and busts up and then it's like, okay, you've got to do it. How did you step back and work on those systems and get that locked down in real life? Like, did you block time aside? Did you just go on a retreat for three days, the two of you, no husbands, no kids? What did you do to actually get it done? I think that it's so it's so easy to be consumed by the client work mm. and by the social media and get so wrapped up in it that it is really difficult to step back. And you know, you're getting all these emails coming in and there's so there's so much that people are asking of you at one time and it's like, okay, I, I need to answer all of these questions first because these people are demanding these things from me. But it, it is important to set that time aside and say, no matter what, we're gonna talk about this and do this. And every Monday morning we do have a team meeting where we sit down and we not only discuss every single project that we're working on, but we also talk to our team and say, what's going right? What's going wrong? How can we make this more efficient? Let's talk about the process. Um, and you know, in the beginning, there was so much to talk about and that's how we developed our systems. Mm. And everybody had input from you know, working on how do we deal with the new clients and new submissions? And how do we take those calls? And how do we, do we schedule consults immediately? Um, you know, there's so many questions to answer and we try different things and we talk to everybody on the team and find out what's working, what's not working, but we do talk about it at least once a week, Monday mornings and, um, and continue that. And that's a really important time that we set aside. And no matter what we sit down for those couple hours and discuss, mm. um, we also talk about it at the end of the year around right after Christmas, because after you know, the holidays are a crazy time mm. and um, everything in December is it's just everyone wants their house ready for the holidays. Right. So after Christmas, before New Year's is a time where we sit down and just talk about the overall big picture mm. and what we want the next year to look like and what our goals are, what we've accomplished that year and how we can do things better overall. And then we come back when, you know, everybody gets back, um, the whole team, and we all discuss together. Mm. But, and, and so I love that you do this. I love that you talk about it every week. There must be things in real time that you come up with in the, in the meeting that net, then needs a different 
plan to execute it and so is it that you say okay you two you, you and you can do this let's schedule time for you to do it or this is only something the two of us can do we schedule time to do it right because we can't just talk every Monday about what needs to be done we also have to schedule in the time to do some of these new ideas and institute these new systems right right absolutely yeah. so then we break down yeah it might be one or two people meeting or somebody is assigned something if we need to come up with a new document for clients yeah a new process, um, we decide who's going to work on it, and then we follow up on it. Mm -hmm. And there, everything goes in the calendar, too, which is also helpful. You know, like, when is it due? When is it due to be reviewed? When did we say this would, we would get this done by? And that That's helps, true. too. And what do you do to manage your team as far as tasks like that? I know Sandra Funk, House of Funk, she uses Asana because what she likes about that, among, I'm sure, a dozen other things, but is that she likes that she might be at home at 1030 at night with her two girls in bed and relax and you know wanting to brain clear and dump all the things that have to happen for the week and assign different things for follow-up and projects for certain team members but she does you know by putting it in a sauna that the person's email is not ringing on their phone and you know it's not it's it's different so it enables her not only in business hours to see what somebody has done and, and check off this is completed, this is not completed, or I need more information, but it allows her to work when she wants to work and not intrude on her team. Do you guys use some kind of platform like that to keep track of everybody? We have, ex we have, we don't actually, we use um, Excel spreadsheets like mm -hmm. crazy. Okay. And um, we do have, we do use Ivy. Okay. So that's the platform that we okay. use for project management, so to speak. But we've been looking for other, you know, as we get more and more projects, <laughs> we realize yeah. like yeah. our weekly rundown with like what, who goes in which column, you know, is tedious and it's, it would be, be and it's on the, we have a shared drive. So everyone can see it at okay. any given point in time, mm -hmm. move it over and whatnot. But that we've been looking at um, different um, programs to see what might be best for our team. Okay. Okay. I mean, you have a system is the point. It doesn't matter what it is, but there's something that you recognize and that you utilize that works for, for all of you. And that's, that's it. Instead of just, you know, random, you know, sticky notes, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hello, did you do this? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think it does help to put like deadlines on things too, so mm -hmm. that you have like accountability there. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't know about Google Drives. I don't I don't use it that often. I use it when somebody on my team insists that I go in and look at it because I'm just I don't know. I don't my brain does I don't know. It they keep telling me it's easy and I'm like, I don't think it's easy. But yeah, <laughs> that's have, definitely have, user yeah. error, I'm sure of it. But like in Asana, for instance, I know that you put it in the task, you put in the date, and it will say to you, Hey, you know, you got a task due tomorrow. Hey, your task is overdue, that sort of a thing. So I don't know, does that happen in Google Drives and all of that too? Uh, it doesn't to my knowledge, but oh. that sauna thing sounds interesting. Yeah, it's cool. You know, and Sandra runs a big team. We're have to look at yeah, that. you should. And you know what? I should be getting a, a, an affiliate on it, the darn thing. But you know, the, the fact of the matter is, is that it is sort of cool and you can go in and put pr different projects. Of course, my first choice is always my Doma. Let's be serious because what I love about that is that you can communicate with me, your window treatment vendor in my Doma. So, yeah. you know, you can send me emails and, you know, not emails, but messages and communication, you know, like you said, you put your kids to bed and you're now starting work again and uh, it's right in that project. I'm not even fishing for it in my emails. It's when I go to open up the Smith project that I'm doing your window treatments for, there's, you know, four messages from Christina and two messages from Renee and I'm like off to the races right in that project. So, you know, there are a lot of, there are a lot of um, platforms out there to maximize your efficiencies and, and as you grow and you scale your business, you already learned that that's really critical, that you have to have the foundation there in place so that as more burden comes to the business, which hello, burden means more clients, and that's not a burden, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> more opportunity. Let's put a positive word on it. <laughs> right. More revenue streams, more income uh, comes. You need to have the... Bells and whistles all moving so that one bell gets rung and the other one gets rung after it. It's a, it moves along like a conveyor belt. That's very important in order to scale, right? Yes, absolutely. And I think part of our process, too, although not 
the sauna or, um, but you know, like I was mentioning before is once the design process is finished, it then gets handed off to another person. And once that proposal is, you know, done and paid for, it gets handed off to the purchasing person. So, you know, in that way, in that regard, at that given time, that person can tell you exactly Mm -hmm. what's going on. So Mm -hmm. that's helpful. Mm -hmm. That's great. You give each person um, ownership over a portion of the entire process and they are responsible and accountable to their part of the process. Exactly. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And that's something that we revised. It's not how we started. Mm. And we found that it works really well. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you what. I, we didn't even talk about how you built that darn 131,000 Instagram followers. You're going to have to come back another show and tell us about that. <laughs> I imagine that was a lot of faces in the phones while, you know, husbands are watching TV and kids are like, you know, coloring at the table. That just is incredible. Yes, there was a, you know, it it looks like you're playing on Instagram. And <laughs> my husband would say that and be like, what are you doing? Why are you on your phone? And I'm like, this is work. Mm-hmm. I'm actually working. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it was almost, it almost became a joke, but it was working. And, um, and it felt more like it as time went on, but it is important. And it's because it's a very important part of our business. And um, we did put a lot of time into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I definitely think you're going to have to come back if you want to and talk about that because we can't even possibly pick that apart in 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Because I I, I can't, I mean, it's just a very intentional, I'm sure the two of you probably talked about it and had a very intentional strategy for what each of your responsibilities would be, who would be doing the commenting, how would the posting get done, what did the post look like, you know, all of that. It's, it's, it's a lot. And to build any Instagram to 500 followers take some intention and effort, let alone to have the level that you girls have. So, um, yeah, whole nother business. And that's, that is the actual burden of business today that, You know, if you girls had been, and I keep calling you girls, don't mind me, because anybody that's not in their 60s, like, you know, 50s are girls to me. So (laughs) I don't mean it denigrating at all. (laughs) Um, Not offended. Okay, good, 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 good. (laughs) Yeah, truly, I should just think ladies instead of girls, right? Um, But, Uh. you know, um, the two of you... um, you don't know business 20, 25 years ago when there was no Instagram and you had all of the responsibility of running your interior design firm and managing your employees and your projects and having that, think about the hours a day that are free for you if you did not have to do Instagram. Think about it. <laughs> it would be fantastic. Wouldn't that be amazing? Right. You, you'd probably, you know, I don't know, you'd actually be able to take care of your family, your husband, your kids, and yourself. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> pretty amazing and I don't know if you know this but I feel like I should uh give a shout out because Renee does all of our photos too she, oh. so we take all of our photos in-house like Whoa. we don't outsource that so that's really amazing I think oh that is that's remarkable Renee you are super talented that's not just a passing interest you are super talented <laughs> Whoa. thank you yes it's, and that's uh, a nice plus for you too right that it you're, is and yeah. I think it's why it's so successful is because of the way the photograph is taken you know it really it it's really important. So yeah, yeah. not only in the way it's taken, but a lot, you know, a billion designers just went, Whoa, I don't have to schedule it. I don't have to pay extra thousands of dollars. I don't have to worry about if he doesn't show up. I don't, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? It's like, (laughs) ah, but still that's a lot of work out of your business. So you're not, you're not paying an outside uh, professional to do it, but Renee isn't doing anything else while she's making these rooms look amazing in the lens. So, um, but that's congratulations. Renee, that's a, that's a remarkable talent that you have. Thank you. I think that, you know, as time is going on, it's becoming harder and harder to find the time for Mm -hmm. us to go and take those pictures because, you know, we have a lot of other things going on. So we try to come back and focus on it. Yeah. And then we'll go together and, um, Christina, she'll, she'll do a lot of the, you know, styling. I'll be looking at the camera and thinking about the light and she'll make sure that there aren't cords showing Mm. and the flowers are there and everything is perfectly styled. So we work together on that as well. Wow. What a terrific partnership you guys have. Really, really, really something else. Um, I knew when I met you, you know, there's a, there's a vibe between people and I, and I just got a really good vibe between the two of you that you were just very, um, 
joined is is the word I felt like I got. And of course, it you know, it's now I can see that it's true. So that's awesome. Good for you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So, all righty, ladies, I have to say, I really do value your time today. You're both very busy and I appreciate the insights and you know, the, the, the lessons that you shared with us, so, so helpful for all of us to know that, you know, it's, you know, it's like I always say, it's like J-Lo at the Oscars, right? We don't see all the <laughs> tape and all the crap holding the boobs this way. And, <laughs> you know, it's like, just she just looks glamorous and gorgeous. I mean, she is both of those things, but has some help. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, uh, thank you. Thank you for coming on the show, Christine and Renee. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. How is that for some straight talk about getting a business off the ground? It's just not easy. I don't think it's easy for any one of us. So if you are out there in business, whether it's a minute or 20 years, and you feel like you're the only one with doubts, that has had their stomach punches, you're not alone. No, you are not alone. I have nine takeaways from the conversation with Renee and Christina that I want to share with you. The first is they set goals from the very beginning, from when they were on the park bench while their kids played until now when they regroup each year at the end of each year during the Christmas break. They talk, they strategize, they plan, and they dream. The second was their first and most important hire in their words was a bookkeeper. How many designers have told us this? If you are in business and you haven't crossed this threshold yet, please, please think about this. Okay. Number three, they systemized their entire process from a PowerPoint presentation to follow when talking with a new prospect all the way to their project management systems. Okay. I mean, you can't ignore this sort of precision, right? Number four, they understand their partnership is important to them. They even have disagreements. They said sometimes it feels like a second marriage, but they also said they could have never have gotten where they are without the support of each other. Number five, Of course, they both expressed how while they now have the faith and the support of their husbands and their extended family, in the beginning, it wasn't easy, easy for any of them, okay? Not for the husbands or the extended family or for these ladies either. They needed to believe in themselves more than everyone else, and they had to work hard to prove to themselves and to their support network it was worth the fight. Number six. They didn't take a salary for the first 18 months. This is not unusual when you start a business, okay? They took that money and reinvested it in the business, in hiring the bookkeeper and in the eventual studio space. Now, do not confuse this with working job after job and not making enough money to pay yourself or to reinvest in the company, okay? That's two very different things. So the one is... The firm was making money and they chose not to take it as salary. They chose to invest it in new employees and studio space. The second is you're working for a year or two or three years and there's no money to either take or invest. See, big difference there. All right. I hope you hear that. Okay. Very different when you intentionally reinvest the money in your business and when you're not even earning enough net profit in order to have money to make a decision about, okay? Number seven, they increased their prices and lowered their discounts and got more more strategic where they bought their product as they grew in confidence, in skill, and in business savvy, okay? It's okay not to know it all in the beginning. It's just don't ever kid yourself about how long the beginning is, all right? Little tweak there, all right? Number eight, they were willing to have the hard conversation, okay? Facing that client, gathering their thoughts and their courage, not easy to do, but they weren't looking to walk away from it either. And how awesome of that showroom to call and express the support, okay? But she was getting ready to dial anyway with or without that phone call. So that takes courage and know that in order to be a successful entrepreneur, it's always going to take courage. And I'll just say a little 
caveat there. If you know someone that's going through something and maybe you could be that phone call of support, home run if you make that call too, right? Number nine, lastly, always being willing to look for ways to improve, to change, to adjust, to recalibrate. They're always willing to figure out ways to be the best versions of themselves as business owners and designers, right? They take stock. When something goes wrong, they evaluate. When they don't like a process, they redo it. So I just think that's so awesome that they are so intentional, all right? So slam dunk, both Christina and Renee get a hashtag smart lady. That is just the darn truth of it, okay? I love it. I love it so much. And I think that, you know, we're definitely going to have to have them back and dig into that Instagram strategy right? Renee um, is the one who is primarily responsible for that, Christina told us, but the two of them together do have input and work on it, and I think we're going to have to have them back, right? So what I'd love for you to do is on the Instagram post of their show today, show them some love for being so open with us here, okay? Christina and Renee had no idea the conversation was going to go down this road when we started talking. We, in fact, intended to talk about the Instagram strategy. And sometimes, you know, things just take a different turn. And they were very, very willing to share what I think you can see was some really amazing lessons that they've gone through. And so if you would, on my post of their Instagram today, on my Instagram post of their show today, if you'd show them some love, if you were encouraged by their conversation and by their journey and let them know, because I know they'd appreciate it, right? Now, if you're not following me on Instagram, I'm right there at Luann Nigara. Okay, so please do that. And if you are subscribed through the show at iTunes and you have not left a review yet, I'd be so grateful if you took a minute to do that. All right, this show, one of the many things it showed today, one of the many lessons that it also conveyed is, you know, how we are all susceptible to what's happening in social media. You know, for the silliest little things, when you get a high five from somebody or a good review or a good conversation all the way to the most serious thing. So when you can spread a little love, I think it's a good thing to do. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm so happy and delighted that you choose to spend this hour with me each week and it would make me over the moon happy, crazy happy. If I knew something you heard here on the show moved you to a decision, a decision that benefits you and your business, okay? Because please, 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 every day, decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.